Troy, once a resplendent jewel in the crown of human civilization, was now a city besieged, a fortress under relentless assault. Its walls, once symbols of impregnability, were scarred and bleeding, their golden sheen dulled by the incessant rain of Greek arrows. At the heart of this beleaguered kingdom stood Priam, a king burdened by the weight of a thousand sorrows. He was a man etched from the same granite as the city's foundations, his demeanor as stoic as the marble statues that adorned the palace. His eyes, once bright with the promise of youth, were now shadowed by the weight of years and the spectre of impending doom. A lifetime of triumphs and tragedies had sculpted his face into a mask of weathered nobility. Yet, beneath the regal facade, a tempest raged, a storm of emotions as tumultuous as the Aegean Sea. Hecuba, his queen, was the yin to his yang, a passionate counterpoint to his measured calm. Her love for Troy was a wildfire, consuming her with a fierce intensity. Their children were a constellation of hopes and fears, each a star in their own right. Among them, Hector, the eldest, was a beacon of hope, a warrior of unparalleled courage. His prowess in battle was legendary, his loyalty to his father unwavering. But fate, a cruel and capricious mistress, had other plans. Paris, a prince of delicate beauty and fatal charm, ignited a conflagration that would consume the city. His abduction of Helen, the face that launched a thousand ships, unleashed the wrath of the Greek pantheon. Achilles, a demigod of unmatched fury, led an army of vengeance, a tidal wave of bronze and steel that threatened to engulf Troy. The city, once a symphony of life, was now a cacophony of fear and despair. The cries of the wounded, the wails of the bereaved, and the ominous rumble of war machines filled the air. Priam, a king transformed into a haunted spectre, moved through the palace like a ghost, his footsteps echoing in the empty corridors. The death of each son was a dagger to his heart, but the loss of Hector, his beloved eldest, was a wound that would never heal. The city's greatest champion, the bulwark against the Greek onslaught, was gone, leaving a void that could not be filled. In a desperate gamble for a sliver of solace, Priam ventured into the enemy camp, a solitary figure against the backdrop of a thousand spears. The encounter with Achilles was a clash of titans, a meeting between a broken father and an implacable warrior. In a moment of unexpected humanity, Achilles, moved by the old king's grief, allowed him to reclaim Hector's body. The journey back to Troy was a pilgrimage of sorrow, a procession of grief that mirrored the city's decline. The final act of this tragic drama unfolded with the inevitability of a sunrise. Troy, a city of poets and heroes, fell to the merciless onslaught of the Greeks. Priam, the last ember of its glory, sought refuge at the altar of Zeus, a desperate plea for divine intervention. But even the sanctity of this sacred place could not shield him from the brutality of war. Neoptolemus, Achilles' son, a young warrior eager to claim his father's glory, struck the final blow. The old king, the last remnant of a vanished world, fell at the altar, his blood staining the sacred stones. With his death, an era ended, a civilization was consigned to the dustbin of history. Troy, the city of towers, was no more, leaving behind only echoes of its grandeur and the enduring legend of its tragic king.